Hello, everybody. Um, so I wanted to make a video about walls and how walls stop change. And so because today I actually had to come back to my house and I had to, um, I had to do some final cleanups because we're going to decontaminate today. I figured that I would just make this video, uh, on the dike at the end of my street. And so if you want to see, this is the dike at the end of my street. This is not, of course, the place where the dike, uh, burst. But uh, this is the dike. Two days ago, I posted a video talking about how time is devouring space. And so I knew that I had to make the, a video which was the opposite or was the complement to that video and which was about space and how space dries up or how space extinguishes the possibility of change. And so how in a way space crushes uh, time to a certain extent. And so, um, and so, yeah, so here we go. This is Jonathan Pajot. Welcome to the Symbolic World. So one of the reasons why it's so difficult to uh, understand, by the way, if you hear noises, it's because there's still a lot of work happening on my street. So sorry, guys, this, uh, this video on space is going to be, is going to be a little, uh, bothered by, it's going to be, uh, going to be eaten a little bit by a bit of chaos. So, uh, <laughs> the reason, um, the reason why it's so difficult to understand the question of the relationship between time and space is because what I think is is happening is that because they're they uh, they have to coexist. You can't have just time and you can't have just space. They they are interlinked in the way that they manifest themselves. Um, it's very difficult to talk about just one side. And so as I talk, and so I decided to do it in two videos because when I try to see both sides at the same time. Uh, you know, just talking about one is enough to fry your brain, but talking about both is almost impossible. And that I think that's why I've had so much difficulty understanding it in the past, is because I would always try to focus on one side. And I've seen authors that talk about this notion of uh, time devouring space and others that talk about uh, space replacing time. And I think that actually what's happening in the modern world is both at the same time. The way to understand it is to understand the modern world as a de-incarnation. I've talked about this before. To understand it almost as heaven and earth separating from each other. And because that happens, it sends the world into a kind of pendulum where the world tends to swing between two opposites. And one of the opposites between which it tends to swing is the effects of time and the effects of space. A radicalization of both. And it's almost like a war between the two to see which one is going to win. As one, you know, takes a swing, then the other does as well. But today is our video to talk about space, and so uh, that's what I'm going to do. There's a legend that says how um, Alexander the Great, at the end of his conquest, up in the northern at parts of Eastern Europe, um, in the Caucasian, in the, the Caucasus area, he built what's called the Caspian Gates. The Caspian Gates were supposed to be these huge iron gates that were built in order to stop the Gog and Magog from pouring into Europe. And Gog and Magog, although they have been later characterized as these kind of demonic figures, and rightfully so, they were originally seen as these nomadic tribes that live in the uh, on the uh, on the steppes in the north of Europe. And so the you know, what the, the Mongols, the Khazars, the nomadic tribes would f actually do that, would come in and would wipe out civilizations. Of course, one of the biggest examples is when the Mongols destroyed Baghdad um, and also when the Huns poured into Europe, you know, and came all the way to the steppes of Rome. The, the nomadic tribes, because they don't care about stable space, they don't care about civilization, they have this desire, they have this capacity to wipe things out and to completely destroy things. The uh, the, the Mongols would uh, 
have this notion that they would return the land back to grazing, you know, would return the land back to this stable plain, you know, where the animals could graze. And so it really is this destruction of space by time. It really is the, nom the nomadic uh, spirit coming in and wiping out time. But the building, but there's also this interplay between the two sides. And so civilization and uh, space pushes against the uh, chaos. Of course, the dike, which I'm standing on, is a great example of where we build a dike on the side of a river and this flowing river, this, this flowing um, water is stopped from coming in and from destroying. And it destroying, but also renewing, also restarting things, because obviously that's what happens. And I'm seeing it in my own life. Now that the water has come, everything is up in the air, you know, it's interesting to go through it. Everything is, uh, you know, even my sleep rhythms have been affected. I, I, I didn't sleep at all last night. And then yesterday during the day, I was so tired and I fell asleep. So my whole rhythm is completely out of whack. Um, and that's what, I mean, that's what chaos does. That's what chaos is. Um, but the notion of, of, uh, of space as pushing against uncertainty, as pushing against the indefinite, is something that the modern world is very strongly about. Now, we have to see it in the modern world as all these systems, all these systems where there's a strange uh, permanence. It starts, of course, with the, the, uh, the possibility of writing down language itself, because language naturally exists in its oral form where it just flows into time, and it has a more non-material uh, reality. But as you write it down, then it starts to inhabit space. It starts to create a kind of permanence to it. And now we've seen a radicalization of that permanence. If you think a little bit about how on the one hand I talked about the internet as reducing space into time, there's also on the internet a, a capacity to make permanent every single possible thing about you. The, the, this notion that whatever it is that you do online is never going to go away. It has, it has been completely made uh, permanent. You know, when we were young we, in the movies, they would talk about, you know, this is going to go on your permanent record. Well, no, everything you do online goes on your permanent record. None of it goes away. And so uh, that is something that you have to, that, that is something that we have to consider. The same in the modern world, the very notion of the nation state is something which is very modern. The notion of a clear border between two states. This is something that did not exist in the ancient world. Rather, there was a kind of hierarchy where you know a powerful nation, let's say a powerful uh, empire like Rome, would have a central city and then would have other secondary cities and identity would flow from these cities. And then on the borders, on the margins would be intermediary uh, uh, places of mixture, places of indefinite space. This kind of this kind of no man's land between the two between the two empires. So, in the notion of the nation state, what we have is this clear, you know, razor sharp border between states. And what has happened is that all the no man's lands, all the ancient places of indefinite space, have been eliminated. The entire world has been mapped out, and everything has been. Delineated and defined. There is no more, you know, even until the 19th century, there was this notion of the kind of, uh, you know, a dark, a dark space in uh, in the the middle of Africa. But now it's all gone. All we have is. Je filme pas votre maison. Je suis toujours en train de faire une vidéo. Je parle à des gens. Désolé, hein. So with the nation state, we have. We have eliminated all the vagaries, all the places that are undefined. And we have completely or as much as possible stabilized space. And science itself is, a, is in a way to uh, science, you could say science is there to kill all the dragons, to kill all the indefinite uh, creatures, all the indefinite categories which exist on the borders of reality and to categorize everything, to name everything, and therefore to map everything. The notion of the map is probably the best way of understanding how this uh, this space has now gone all the way to the edge. You know, there, uh, usually a long time ago on maps, there was the there be dragons part of the map, and now we have eliminated the there be dragons. We have this sense that 
there is no room for uncertainty. And it's the same with the nations as well. There is no room for change. These nation states, some of them are quite arbitrary, but we have this thinking idea that the borders of these states cannot change. They're not allowed to change. Um, and we can't totally justify why. We can't, if we think about it, we can't imagine that all these states are going to be the same forever. But we also know that, that as we have built up these very, very clear, clear borders, the, the stakes of the changing of these borders is very high and is measured in war and is measured in, in, uh, in death. And so as while on the one hand we have this notion of time, which is devouring space, the modern world is also, is also at the same time represented by a kind of radical space where the poss where permanence this strange permanence comes to exist and you know your you know, this whole idea for example that you have these id identity cards that you have a name which is inscribed in the government all the state powers which give you you know your your social security number all these things which are these fixed things about you that are kind of given to you at birth and that you uh that you um that you have you know forever uh and you and and uh, are impossible to change and so those are those are the uh, counterbalance to the other side of the meadow so i thought it would be something that would be interesting to think about because as i said i really do see the modern world as a deincarnation and i see those two sides as ramping up against each other and the internet is the best place to see it what at first was uh, the internet was touted as being the place of freedom, the place where anything goes. Then, in order to counter that, systems were created for the internet to become the very opposite. The, a system of control that has never been seen, that the likes of which has never been seen in the history of the universe. And so, those two things are happening at the same time. This kind of push towards uh, a, a, a fluidity, an anarchy, a breakdown of categories and at the same time a radicalization of categories and you can see it as well even as the, the identity split for example in the whole gendered fluidity movement you see it as well it's not just that you have fluidity but this fluidity also creates these strange permanent uh, categories of desire which are these strange categories of, uh, of, of desire which are cannot be questioned and so you have, you know, 56 pronouns, but you cannot question them. If you question the pronouns, then you uh, then you are in danger in some places in the U.S. and in, in New York City, for example, you're in danger of being fined for doing so. And so. So anyway, so I'm giving that up for you guys to think about, to think about this relationship between space and time, to think about the relationship between um how they play up against each other in the modern world and how they um, build up one against the other. And my personal situation is the best, is one of, is a great example. They built a dike at the end of my street and at the end of our town and they build dikes all along the waterways, um, of the, the St. Lawrence waterway. And because of that, the water has no place to go. It has no, no vague lands to inhabit. And so all it can do, do is go up and up and up. And so at one point the dike breaks. So what are you going to do? They'll do what, this is what they're going to do at the end of my street. They're going to make the dike higher, going to make the dike bigger. And imagine if everybody does that. Now everybody all the way up the waterways starts to make these dikes higher and bigger and bigger. And then what's going to happen? The water has nowhere to go. All it can do is rise, rise, rise. And the flood just goes up until some other dike somewhere is going to break. And so, um, anyway, so maybe now you understand why I'm talking about this right now, because it's a way to talk about symbolism uh, as I'm going through all of this. So once again, guys, uh, I want to thank you for all your support. And, um, and uh, yeah, next video is going to be about credit and how it affects our, our interaction with the future. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.